Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. So some day three Cowboys draft talk. Um, very busy day today. We had, came into the day with seven picks. A lot of activity. So we're just going to kind of go right down the rounds and uh, we'll talk about the two trades that we executed today and then I'll give my uh, final grade for the draft. I hate giving grades, but just in terms of um, how I see the draft so far um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll conclude from there. But uh, we started the day with Dorrance uh, Armstrong Jr., uh, defensive end from Kansas. Um, very excited about that pick. As a fan, uh, it's hard to ever get disappointed when your team's selecting a pass rusher. Um, pass rushers come at a premium. Um, I didn't think it was a super need for us in the draft, but um, with with Demarcus Lawrence uh, being on a franchise tag, not you know Taco not quite developed yet. Uh, a lot of questions around guys like a Randy Gregory and and and, and so forth. Really like Dorrance Armstrong Jr. Uh, as a fan of Texas and somebody who follows the Big 12 quite co closely. He was far and away the best player on their team. Somebody who was a all Big 12 performer, highly respected across the conference. Um, and he, I think it was, uh, what's his name? Todd McShay. I think he said a word today about Dorrance. He said he's very slippery as a pass rusher. Um, and some of those highlight videos, you saw him just abusing Texas that year that uh, basically essentially got Charlie Strong fired. Uh, Doris Armstrong Jr. was a big, big part of that. Uh, some of that uh, was actually against Connor Williams. Um, they moved him around a little bit. I like what he can give us, um, even if it's just as a rotational guy, when he develops into a rotational guy in the fourth round. Uh, that's tremendous value. I think he is very, very athletic. Um, I like his his frame and his build. Um, and and the, the, the thing I love is that Rod Marinelli's strength is with the defensive line. We know he, he can get coached up. I saw flashes from Taco towards the end of the season that were not there at the beginning. Um, I think we can see some similar things um, with this young man. Uh, moving on uh, to the end of the round, we picked Dalton Schultz from Stanford, who is a tight end. Obviously, with Jason Wynn retiring, James Hanna no longer with us, um, that is a huge area of need on this team. Um, now, he is definitely more of a developmental guy as well. Uh, now, as fans, we have to be excited for him coming from a program like Stanford. Great pedigree. You know he was coached very, very well uh, by Coach Shaw. And they run a very physical scheme. He blocked a lot for Bryce Love. Um, you know, some of the highlight videos, I haven't didn't scout him very closely. It wasn't re a guy really on my radar. So those of you who uh, watch a lot of Pac-12 ball, watch a lot of Stanford, please chime in with your thoughts on Dalton Schultz. Uh, but just from what I've seen, he looks... Kind of, you know, he's 6'5", but he looks like he has some H-back qualities. Uh, somebody that we can move around. Um, and and, and he, he looks to have some run after the catch ability. We'll see. I mean, we, we, I don't know if we're going to be relying on Rico Gathers. Um, I think it's going to be more to come with the tight end position uh, as we go into camp. I don't I don't know if, those, if that's the group. I'm pretty sure that's not the group they'll have isolated. Um, going in there, they may look to sign a, a, a more of a veteran guy um, to kind of help lead the way. Especially after, again, I keep, I know I keep saying this on all my videos. You look at the tight ends in our division. You look at what the Eagles did adding Dallas Goddard. Um, is you know we have to you know we have to step our game up there, especially for uh, helping out our young quarterback and Dak Prescott. Speaking of quarterbacks, that leads me to the fifth round as we select Mike White from uh, Western Kentucky and. You know, again, as you guys, uh, you know, follow me and tune into this channel, I told you I am always in favor of picking another quarterback. I, I thought they should pick a quarterback anytime after the fourth or fifth round. I was good. And that's what they did. Um, I know Dak Prescott is hopefully our franchise quarterback. That's what we should all be rooting for um, and, and encouraging. But um, all these teams, whether it's the Patriots, the Packers, whoever, pitching Packers really come to mind. These guys are constantly picking quarterbacks, constantly developing, um, sharing information in their quarterback room, and developing these young guys. You saw how the Patriots developed a Jacoby Brissett, developed a, a Jimmy Garoppolo, and flipped them down the road. Why, you know, I don't understand why more teams don't take that approach, but I'm happy that Dallas, um, you know, Cooper Rush is not enough. I know he looked very good in the preseason last year and, and stayed on our roster all year. 
that's not enough. Get a guy in there with a Mike White who has a, kind of a similar, um, you know, come up like Dak where he, he really kind of showed some people some things at the Senior Bowl. Um, he's a bigger, taller guy. He's about six foot five, um, pretty accurate, pretty strong arm. Uh, the question with him is, you know, mobility and, and you know, the small school thing and, um Really, the mobility is probably the biggest thing that I see from him and probably why he fell uh, to where he did in the draft. But happy that he's a Cowboy. I, I Again, every draft I would pick, a, I would always pick a quarterback. I'm churning that, that, that part of my, my team. Um, so we move into the sixth round where we pick Cedric Wilson out of Boise State. I told you guys yesterday I love wide receivers who were very productive in college. And this guy was even more productive than my guy, Michael Gallup. Um, uh, we get a Cedric Wilson who's six foot two, I believe. Um, you know, a little bit of a long strider guy, but highly productive. Saw last year he caught what 85 passes for like 1500 yards, seven touchdowns. I think he's Boise State's all time leading receiver. I think, um, 1100 yards his junior year. Um, if he was, or I think he broke like a season senior single season record. I know we had some people uh, from Boise chime in on LVE. Please chime in on Cedric Wilson. I didn't see him. I didn't watch as much film on him as I did on LVE. Um, but I'm, I'm excited. Again, I told you guys, two wide receivers I wanted to see picked in this draft. Cowboys obliged. Very happy about that. Very happy that you're picking people who are used to catching the ball in college. It annoys me to know him when, when we see some of these guys get picked that had 27 catches. And they're not used to, to just a, seeing the football high volume stuff. Um, this guy, Cedric Wilson and Michael Gallup, uh, as I said yesterday, they're used to they're used to being the man. They're used to demanding coverage. And there's something to be said for that level of production uh, at the college level. Now, we move on from wide receiver. Uh, we traded our, our other six round pick um, for, I think I'm missing somebody in there. I think we, we, we drafted a linebacker from Indiana. Um, I'm struggling to remember the guy's name. Quite frankly, I'm not really familiar with him. So, again, if you guys want to chime in, um, those of you who are familiar with that that outside linebacker, um, I'll, I'll have his name in, in the comments, but I com- completely spaced on him just now. Uh, but we did trade you know, the big stuff. We did trade our uh, one of our six-round picks for Tavon Austin of the Rams, uh, formerly of the Rams, uh, a guy who, again, is a Big 12 fan, saw him a lot at West Virginia, um, one of the great, most explosive uh, special teams guys and open field runners I've ever seen. Um, so now he's on the Cowboys. He's a guy that, you know, I'm excited for the potential of him. But it's also alarming that he, everybody got their stuff together when Sean McVay got there in L.A. And he really never fit in. And I know they got Robert Woods and, and Sammy Watkins and Cooper Cup and all some of these other guys. Uh but even with him going over running back, you know, I think he got hurt. Um, I would like to see the Cowboys utilize him uh, the way you see the Patriots utilize a James White. Um, you know, just multiple lining him up. They kind of tried to do that with Ryan Switzer a little bit, who we'll get to in a second. Um, but I, I think the potential is there. Even, even a guy like we used to do with the, the jet sweep stuff with Lucky Whitehead. I want to see that stuff with Tavon Austin. I want to see him on special teams. Um, I know he had lost that to Farrell Cooper, but, you know, and that's the other thing, too, uh, with Cedric Wilson. He has some kick return ability as well um, because that leads us to Ryan Switzer, who was traded for Jaha Ward of... Uh, form to the Oakland Raiders or lost whatever you want to call them. They got traded to the he got traded to the Raiders for Jaha Ward, who is a defensive tackle, uh, former former second round pick, but has been very uh, underachieving, just like uh, uh, Tavon Austin, even more so. I mean, he's Ward's been pretty much a bust so far. So um, this is going to be a resurrection project for Rod Marinelli. We need a lot of help at defensive tackle, guys. I don't like any I don't like any of our tackles, and that includes Malik Collins. I'm sorry, that's just my personal opinion. Um, so, you know, a lot to look at there. And then in the seventh round, I believe we drafted um, Bo Scarborough from Alabama, big back, um, a guy who, you know, reminded some people of, a, you know, Derrick Henry in a way, not as special, obviously, um, but somebody who's a physical presence. And you put a guy like that 
with the offensive line that we have. And what I like about Bo Scarborough, he doesn't have a whole lot of wear and tear on him like some of these other running backs coming out because he had to share so much time with a Damian Harris and some of the other guys with Jacobs that they had over there at Bama. Um, now, he's very limited in his role, but if you're the Cowboys, you're hoping, hey, we can get a – maybe this guy turns into maybe a LeGarrette Blunt type. Now, the issue with him is short area quickness and kind of building up steam. He's one of those guys where – if he gets 10 yards down the field, watch out, as you guys saw in the national championship two years ago. Um, but if if you're stopping him at the line of scrimmage and he can't get going, um, then he's not very effective. So, you know, good pickup in the seventh round. They need some depth in the running back room right now. Uh, Alfred Morris, I believe, is gone. So you just have Zeke, Rod Smith, um, you know, probably swing in Tavon Austin to that mix, although he'll probably – if, if I'm the Cowboys, I would look to cross-train Tavon. Um, but all around, I know we went through a lot of players, guys, here. But um, all around, if, I'm, if I had to give a grade for this draft, um, I would give this a B+. Plus. Um, the, the, what's stopping me from I, – I, mean, I don't just hand out A's and, and all that type of stuff. I'm, again, I told you, this is objective um, insight and feedback that I give here on this channel. Um I believe we kind of uh, missed the boat with not getting another defensive tackle. Um, so I am going to dock the Cowboys for that. I know they made the trade uh, for Jihad Ward, but they did have to give up Ryan Switzer. Um, and, and Ward, quite frankly, when he came out of college, he was really more of a defensive end, like a 3-4 defensive end that they can kick inside. And I'm just tired of that. I, I need my 320 nose tackle to fend off people for my linebackers. And I didn't get that in this draft. And I, I really thought that was something the Cowboys would, would chime in, would, would, would hone in on. But that's the only, that's me nitpicking, really. I mean, that's that's my biggest uh, critique. Other than that, I, I give this a solid uh, B+. Plus. Um, I really like what they did. I think they did a good job of uh, addressing need. They got three pass catchers. They got a running back. They drafted another developmental quarterback. Um, they drafted a uh, guard that can also help them out at tackle. Very versatile on Connor Williams. Across the board, they did an excellent job of staying true to their board, not panicking, not doing anything crazy, taking a chance on a Tavon Austin. They get they get mad points for that mad prop. So B plus, that's a very strong grade from me. I'm heavily critical of this franchise because it's my team. I'm always critical of myself, so I'm critical of my teams as well. And very, very pleased. You guys, let me know what you guys think of the two trades today, of the draft. Uh, somebody please chime in uh, with some in intel on the linebacker from Indiana. And, um, yeah, I just appreciate you guys. Uh, we'll probably be doing a couple more videos. Not probably. We will be doing a few more videos. Uh, more big picture NFL stuff on the draft, winners and losers, um, and then my insights on the um, all or nothing series on Amazon about the Dallas Cowboys. It's going to be some looks like some very explosive content, um, a lot for us to kind of pick through and go over um, as we continue to audit this organization. So very excited, uh, appreciate you guys. We got to uh, we got over the 500, blew through 500 subs. So. Uh, now we got to set a new goal. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank each and every one of you for uh, tuning in, chiming in. I really appreciate this conversation. It's very therapeutic for me, um, and hopefully, I can help um, you know be a breath of fresh air to you guys as well. As always, thank you. See you guys soon.